Step with Chinese Garden. And today I am bringing you my second seed haul for 2022. Everyone really seemed to enjoy the first one I posted about the ones I ordered from Johnny Seeds. So of course I couldn't help myself. And there were some other places I bought some more seeds from. So I thought I would share those with you as well. There are a lot of new subscribers here. So welcome, thank you for subscribing. And to remind everybody, I'm gardening in zone 5B in the Chicago suburbs. If you enjoy all things garden, please subscribe and follow along here. I'd love to have you along for a ride. Otherwise, let's get into this seed haul. The first batch I got from my local garden center. I've said before I like Hudson Valley Seed Company. I got rainbow chard that I haven't grown before, but I think it's so beautiful. I've seen it planted in pots or containers in addition to a vegetable bed. And it really is striking with that dark green foliage and then the stems being in rainbow colors of purple and red and yellow, and you can eat it. So this is gonna be a first for me in 2022. Pansy mix. Now, I grew some pansies last year, the violas actually, brushstroke violas, and they were so beautiful and unique, and I really enjoyed them. I like them even more now than I did before. So I've added a lot of pansies to the collection for next year. Rembrandt Snapdragons. My Snapdragons did so beautifully last year, and I saw this with the bicolored or more than one color on the blooms. I think this is gonna be a showstopper. Very excited for these. And then another one I haven't grown before, Purple Perfume Nicotiana. This I know Erin the Impatient Gardener grows and she lives in a woodland setting similar to me and she has great luck with it. So I'm excited to see how these do for me. And then as I said, more pansies, this one being a Swiss Giants blend. I think they're so versatile because you can plant them fairly early because they're pretty cold tolerant. And then also in the fall too, and maybe in the summer they suffer a little, but I just think you get a lot of bang for your buck for these guys. And they do well in a little bit of shade. Now in my Johnny's Seed Haul, I talked about buying some seeds from Swallowtail Seeds. One of my subscribers, thank you again, my Bloom Overflows, told me about Swallowtail Seeds and boy did I place an order. These haven't come in the mail yet, but I wanted to go ahead and put this out there because seed starting is coming up on us. And if you want a certain variety, I want you to be able to get it. So I will put a picture of all of these on the screen so you can see what each will actually grow into. I must say I was incredibly impressed with the variety that this company had. There were a lot of different options for shade in color, meaning that I have had trouble finding shade plants that really have live vivacious color. If you've been following for a while, you know I love in your face color. I can see how people really enjoy the pastels, but it's not especially my jam. So to be able to go to this website and see that they had all of these colorful shade options was a real treat for me. I was also very impressed with the amount of perennials that they had available to grow from seeds. Some that I've never seen before, a lot of unique ones, so... Swallowtail seeds, so far hitting it out of the park. Okay, I've got 26 total, let's go through these. First we have the Red Wave Sunflower. Pro Cut Red Sunflower. Again, a reminder, all the Pro Cuts do not have pollen, so they're really nice for cutting and putting an arrangement so that there's not pollen falling everywhere. It doesn't really bother me if there's some pollen on plants, but some people are allergic or just don't want yellow pollen falling everywhere. So if that's you, Pro Cut's probably the way to go for you. The Autumn Beauty Sunflower Collection. I think these colors are incredible. I also know Laura, the OG of YouTube gardening, has also recommended an Autumn Beauty Sunflower group. They're just stunning for fall, even summer, I think. So I can't wait to see how these work for me next year. Another Pro Cut. Pro Cut Plum Sunflower. Two more sunflowers. Gypsy Charmer. Okay. Okay. Hold the phone for a second with her. Can you believe that coloring? Try colored petals. Try. 
thrice. Never before have I seen this. I think she's got to be a stunner in the garden and especially for cut flower gardens to put into arrangements. Also one of their best sellers. And pollen free. The last sunflower is the Pro Cut Red Lemon Bicolor Sunflower. Moving on to Salvia, Hummingbird Coral Nymph. Again, this is one of those that struck me in my tracks. I have never seen a salvia with this coloring, with that coral and cream together. Ugh. Whoever came up with that, God bless you. That is a beautiful flower. Dun dun dun! Poppy seeds. I mentioned before I had terrible, terrible bad luck with planting poppies last year, but I'm bound and determined to get some blooms this year. I ordered Cherry Glow Bread Seed Poppy, which has really interesting seed heads as well, and I thought that deep red coloring was incredible, of course. These will get two to three feet tall. Next, the Danish Flag Bread Seed Poppy. These come in a half a gram, and a half a gram is 1,100 seeds. 1100, 1100. Looks like I may be sharing some of these or fingers crossed we'll have a striking, striking display of Danish flag poppies. These have fringed lacy edges so it has a little more texture to its appearance which I think is incredibly fun. Also two to three feet tall. More pansies! I purchased the Colossus Blotch Mix. I love the mixture of deep coloring in there. I think that's gonna be very pretty both spring and fall. These are cold hardy. Do They do really well. I believe you can even plant them out before your last frost date. So in a place like us where it's stays cold pretty long, it'll be great to see that color. And those are big four to five inch blooms. I also got the Colossus Deep Blue Blotch, and I actually meant to delete that after I got the blotch mix, but it's fine. I'll find a place for them. I think any true blue flower is, I don't want to say sacred and sound really dramatic, but kind of sacred. Next, Nicotiana. I got another variety of Nicotiana called Perfume Antique Lime. I love the vintage feel that it has to it and I think paired with the deep purple of these could be a really interesting show together. Those apparently have a very sweet smell, are very aromatic, and they can be planted in part shade, which is huge because I have a lot of areas of shade. So if you have some shade, maybe think of some Nicotiana. Hold your hats. These nasturtiums are out of this world. Orchid Flame. I planted many nasturtiums this year and had incredible results. They flourished. They went over the pots that I had in them. So it was a really beautiful cascading display. I've not seen a variety of nasturtiums like this. So again, well done, Swallowtail Seeds. Also Orchid Cream and apparently these are magic. What I mean by that is they first start blooming in some white and then turn to red over time. So it literally pretty much changes color. Oh, okay. Very cool, very cool nasturtiums. And also the notorious but ever beautiful and charming Lysianthus. Had to get one more variety. Echo Pink Pickety. Once again, I have never seen this variety before with the creamer white body of the bloom and then the edges being that soft pink. I think that's so pretty. As a reminder, Lysianthus takes six months to grow from seed. However, she's a gorgeous cut flower, obviously, and she can last about two weeks in a vase. So that is an enormous vase life. And then there was the begonias. My shade plant mom heart is singing over these begonias. Illumination apricot shades. These apparently do best cascading down from a hanging basket or something where you can let them overflow. They do well in filtered shade. And again, that color is right there. It's not a weak looking flower by any means. Not that pastels are weak. Not what I'm saying. But they're very noticeable. And then we have On Top Sunset Shades, 
untapped begonias are apparently known for their very long lasting bloom. So these will have shades of orange and yellow with a red tip to them. Again, that in your face color, so here for it. The next untapped begonia, Untapped Fandango. This one also has a white cream with coral edging again I think will be striking especially if you have a background like my house is now black that against black I think is going to be mm, real pretty hang in there with me eight more to go two different varieties of bachelor buttons classic fantastic which is the ones you usually see with blues purples and some whites and then also classic romantic where we're getting into those pinks, some red and white. I did something similar to the Classic Fantastic last year, and it did okay for me, not great. So I'm looking forward to seeing how these perform. I was mistaken on their height, and I think they need to be toward the front of the garden bed because they don't get very tall. So in my cut flower garden, they were kind of shaded by my enormous straw flowers. Time for the perennial. Next we have lupines. I've never grown these before, but I think that structure of the blooms has such an interesting textural component. It can also be grown in sun or part shade. They're hardy to zone four and can bloom in the first year. The specific variety I purchased was a bundle called Bands of Nobles Mixed which has a lot of different colors and even some bicolored blooms, meaning two colors on the bloom. Then we have primrose, primula times pubescence, I believe is how you pronounce that. This can be grown in part shade to light shade. And this variety has a real antique type of look to it, vintagey, which I adore. Ladies Mantle Thriller. I have heard wonderful things about this plant. We live in a wooded area that is fairly wet and these apparently thrive in those conditions. So definitely going to utilize this. Can be grown in part shade to light shade and is winter hardy to zone four. And that's it. Our second seed haul is complete. Again, the majority of those were from Swallowtail Seeds, also some Hudson Seed Company and botanical interest in there as well. Thank you for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to follow all things gardening here with me. And comment below and let me know what you've bought in addition to the first round of buying your seeds. Because let's be honest, there's always another round of buying seeds. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.